Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Jazakumullah khairan for everybody attending Lesson 11 Of 11 lessons So this is the final lesson We will have an extra class next week Where we will talk about the khushu of salah And we will do a word to word translation Of the salah Inshallah So um, sorry about the delay Just had a little mini emergency to deal with So alhamdulillah We can start So if, so if you can't hear, um, it might be uh, the volume um, needs upping, or you might need to just log out of Zoom and then log back in because others can hear me. Right. 20 minutes late today. Let's see what we can do. Right. So the homework, we started off with the homework. The homework was to complete all four above tables for the verb. Ghana. So we wanted the Marfu table, the Mansub table, the Majzum table, and the Fi'l Amr, the command table. So it was just a matter of copying out from your booklets. The point being, it gives you some a chance to write and to write and to sort of learn as you're writing. So yakunu, yakunani, yakununa. So this is the table. This is the table. Sorry. Sorry. All right. So this was the table, the Marfu table. So just a matter of learning it and copying it. Do you have to learn the whole table? If you can, that's good. If not, just learn the ones, the masculine ones, the ones that I put a number next to in the lesson. And then the next one was do it in the next mood. So mansub. So this is mansub. Right? So you drop the noons, except the super strong plural women, they keep their noon. And then all the dhamma endings become fatha. So again, it's just a matter of writing this down and copying from your books. The main thing being that, you, for example, you look at this word here, yakununa, they all were, means the same as yakunu, they all were. It's just that a controller came in front of it, one of these words came in front of it, and they caused the noon to drop, but the word still means yakununa, it means the same thing. And then we make it majzum. So majzum, we normally and put the put a sukun on the last one here. But with this irregular verb gana, we get a problem. The problem is you can't put a noon sukun with a wow sukun. Uh, you can't have a noon jazam with a wow jazam. Two jazams or two sukuns in Arabic, they don't come together. So something has to give. Something has to happen. So what happens is the wow drops. So you get yakun. Takun, takun, takuni, this one's fine. Akun, nakun, nakun. And for short, yakun can be written yaku. And taku, it comes in the Quran. Or laku, aku, aku comes in the Quran. Maybe taku as well, I'm not sure. But aku comes in the Quran. So again, it's just a matter of copying and being becoming familiar with these words. And then this was the imperative, the fi'l amr, the command form. Kun means be to you, singular, masculine. Kuna means you to be. Kunu means you all be. Kuni means you sister, be. Kuna you to be and kunna you all women be okay so somebody's asking can you explain um the two jasms coming together so if we look at this one here yakuna yakuna now we need to make this yakuna majzum 
to make it majzum, the last letter gets a jazm or sukun on it. So now if this noon gets a sukun on it, it's next to a wow that has a sukun on it. And in Arabic, you don't get two letters with sukun on them next to each other. You can't have that. So something has to give, something has to happen. So in this case, what happens is when you put a noon, when you put a jazm on the noon, a sukun on the noon, the wow drops. So you get yakun. Can you see yakun? The wow has dropped. Now it's fine. You've got a jazm. Previous to that, you've got a dhamma. So this is the, the sort of rule that, that there is in Arabic. Okay, right. And this was the command form, which is which we've just done. And then this was the test. So how can you tell if a verb is weak? It's the same answer we did about four, five lessons ago. If the root word contains either an alif, a wow, or a ya, then that verb is a weak verb, irregular verb, however you want to call it. Call it weak, call it irregular, it's a weak verb. The second way you can tell a verb is weak is if the second and the third letters are the same. So, dad, lam, lam, dalla, that is a weak verb. The problem you have with weak verbs is that they don't sit into this, they don't slot into their tables. You have to make some adjustment. It's the same case with the past verbs and it's the same case with the present verbs. Question two, translate the following word. So this was just learning exercise. Taqulu, so it's the verb qala. So it becomes taqulu means you say in the masculine way, masculine form. Yaqulu, he says. Yaquluna, they all say. Taquluna, you all say. And these are the most important ones. There's one more that's important after this. But these are the ones that are the super important ones, the masculine ones. Oops, something wrong happened with them. Um, PowerPoint, right? It's supposed to be it's supposed to be the top one first. So Nakulu, we say, and Akulu, I say. So them six, the four in the previous one, these four, and these two top ones, them are the essential ones. Anything more is gonna help you, you're gonna get more have more ability to translate, but them six were the most important ones. They come, that pattern comes most in the Quran. So moving on, taqulani is, you both say, masculine and feminine, and also they both say, feminine. Tricky one, don't worry if you can't. It's dual, so don't worry about it if it's struggling. Yaqulani, they both say, Yaqulna, they all say, meaning women. Taqulina, you say, feminine. Again, the feminine ones are tricky. And the last one, taqulna, you all say. Translate the following passage. So this is what it is all about. This is what we are trying to get to. So we can understand, we can translate, we can have an idea of what the verse is saying. So this one. Fala. So not, so do not. Taqul, right? Taqul is taqulu. What happened is it became madzum because of the lamb. Lamb is a madzum controller. It makes the next word majzum. So instead of saying fala taqulu, it's going to be fala taqul, right? Fala taqul. So do not say lahuma, right? To 
huma, them two, right? La huma is, huma is an attached pronoun we did in maybe lesson four. So do not say to them to uffin, right? Uff. It's talking about parents there. May Allah Allah protect us from saying words of disrespect to our parents. Right? So fala taqul. It is taqulu. But it became taqul because the lam, majumifying controller, came in front of it. So as long as you know taqul means the same as taqulu, that's good. Waqulu. Waqulu. Right? Waqulu is it's a command. It's a command not only to one person, to plural. Right? To many people. Waqulu and you all speak linnasi to Nas, which is to people, husnan, kindly. Waqulu linnasi husnan. So here, waqulu, and you all speak. It's a command form. Yeah? Qul is for say. Qulu is you all say. Plural. Right? Wala akulu. Wala akulu. So I, I say akulu. Wala akulu and I say not. So, and I do not say. Lakum to you all. Inni. Okay. It's translated as I am. So I am Malak, an angel. And in some translations, you may get indeed I for this one. Okay. I think this is the last one. Atakuluna. Atakuluna. So the A. If, it's, if you start off a sentence with ah many times, it's, it's, it's a way of questioning, right? So ah means you're asking a question. The other way, sometimes you have a hal, like hal ataka, right? Hal also makes it into a question. So here we have ataquluna, you all say, with a question. So do you all say, yeah? Do you all say ala, ala Allahi? So here against Allah. Even if you understood ala to mean on, in your head you still know what's what's happening. You still you can render it. You know what's going on, yeah. It won't make sense if you say on, but right. So ataquluna, do you all say ala Allahi against Allah? Mala, what not? Ta'lamuna, you all have ilm, you all have knowledge, you all know. So, do you all say against Allah what not you all know? Okay. I think that was it. Anybody got any questions? I'd like to congratulate you all, those who are attending. Obviously, there's people in different countries who can't attend a live class because it's 1, 2 o'clock there in AM. But everybody else who's attending all the way until the last class, Zakumullah Khairan, you've achieved something and you've proven to yourself that you can finish what you start. You can complete what you start. Um, that doesn't mean others can't. Others have different circumstances, but the guys who are online now, you know, you've proven to yourself that you can complete something that you've started. Inshallah. For well, the top line, is there a reason the noun drops? Of the top line. Yes, so the top line. Is there a reason the noon drops? 
Yeah, so the reason why the noon drops here is because it's command form, right? It's command form. So for command form, it has to be in majzoom. So majzoom, the noon is dropped, right? So the command form is in majzoom mode. So the noon is dropped. That's why the noon is dropped there. Right. Somebody's asking the next class. The next class will be, it won't be a lesson on Arabic. It will be a talk by me on Khushu. Remember Ramadan is coming. So we want our Salah to count in Ramadan especially. So I'll do a talk on Khushu. It's a reminder for myself and reminder for yourselves. And after the talk on Khushu, one of the excellent ways we can actually have this concentration in our Salah is if we know what we're reading. And it's easier to know what we're reading if we understand from the Arabic. So after that, I will do a word-to-word -word translation, still to our class, and then we'll complete it there next week, inshallah. Ghana means, Ghana literally means he was. Yeah, he was. Right, happy to move on? Yes, so somebody's written, I fully know what I'm reading in my salah, but still that khushu. So I'm hoping next week's lesson will, inshallah, be a means for you to get top khushu and for us all. Because it's sometimes a reminder of what you, sometimes you break down the word, it sometimes makes it easier. You might hear a hadith, you might hear something, a technique, you might hear some, some you know, idea that, you know, you use and it carries on through Ramadan and then continues after, inshallah. So khushu is the concentration, the humbleness, the concentration in salah. All right, okay. Vocabulary, basura. Basura. Anybody want to type it here? Basura. Ya basuru. Okay, good. To see. To perceive. It's different to ara, right? Like alam tara, right? I'm uh, sorry, not alam tara. It's different to yara. So, jaza. So we say, what do we say? Jazakallah khair. We say that, so it's reward. Jaza yajzi. You can tell this is a weak verb. It's got a ya inside it. And so yajzi, you know, it's going to be, you know, that's going to be a different table. It might be a different table. Ja'a yaji'u. Again, another weak verb. To come. Hakama yahkumu. Hakama yahkumu. Hakim. Who is the hakim? Yeah. Judge to judge. Khalafa yakhlufu. Khalafa yakhlufu. To be behind. So the Khalifa came after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Khalf is behind. Khalafa. Razaqa yarzuqu. To provide. Excellent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-razzaq, the provider. Raja'a yarji'u. Raja'a yarji'u. Return. Rahima yarhamu. Good. To be merciful. So you get Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim from there. Yarhamuk Allah. Yeah? Ra'a Yara. To see. Sadaqa Yasduku. Sadaqa Yasduku. To speak the truth, to be truthful, 
So the pot is from there as well. Somebody wrote, I'm happy. Why are you happy? Okay. Next one. Sabara yasbiru. Yeah, sadaqa is also has a meaning of charity as well. It's the same word. Sabara yasbiru. To be patient, steadfast. Shahida yashhadu. Shahida yashhadu. To witness. So somebody's asking, so ra'a is to like see, but basura is to perceive. There's a difference. It's a difference. Yeah, it's like to perceive to see, but to perceive. And ara is to see. So it's got some difference in there. Eve, so even in Arabic, even if two words are pronounced are translated the same. But they're different words, then they are different, you know, they are different connotations. There's there's a different meaning, even though maybe in English, you know, the translator couldn't find another word. So they kept the words the same, but that is because the word is different, the meaning is is different as well. Okay, I don't understand that right. Right, okay. So lesson eleven. We're ready to go. Do we need a 10 minute break seeing as though we started 15 minutes later? Maybe we have a five minute break. All right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Bismillah rahman rahim Right. So no tables today. No tables. Right. I'm going to teach you a few templates. Some templates are, you know, you're going to learn these templates and you will be able to transform words into new words yourself. Inshallah. No, so people are saying no no 10 minute break, right? So maybe no 10 minute break, yeah? If you want a five minute break, you might want to write that down, yeah? So there's some new slides in this. This slide isn't in your book. I sort of just put this slide in about two days ago to try to make it easier. Five minute break. Right. So look at this now. Qatala means, what does Qatala mean? To kill. But in the sentence, it means he killed. He killed. Now, I want to show you a way of making the doer of the verb from the root word itself. So what I want to do, here's the verb. It means he killed. I want to show you how to form the noun of he killed. So I want you to teach you how to say killer, right? I just chose killer because just, uh, you know, I use qatala as quite a few examples, right? So I want you to teach you how to say killer. So the doer of the verb, like fight, fighter, play, player, remembrance, rememberer. Can you see? So this is how you do it. This is a pattern. Okay. Look what happened. The first word stays the same. The first, sorry, the first letter stays the same. But after that letter comes an alif. You insert an alif. Is this with every verb? It's with every three lettered verb. Regular verb, definitely. Irregular verb, I'll have to think about it. If, you, if there's any changes. But this is the pattern for changing from the root word to the one who does that verb, right? So, qa, so you add alif. On the second letter, you put a kasra, right? Over here, there's a fatha, a zabr. On the second letter here, you put a zair, a kasra. And then on the last letter, you remove the fatha. You remove the azabar and you put a 
double dhamma. You put dobesh. So this one was a verb. What has this become now? Is this still a verb now? It's a noun. What's the easiest way to tell in Arabic that a word is a noun? Double dhamma ending. Double dhamma ending. So qatala becomes qatilun. For those who know Urdu, it's the same pattern. Qatilun means killer. So you apply this template to other verbs and you will get the doer of the verb. Let me give you an example. Kafara. Kafara means he disbelieved. How am I going to say disbeliever? Exactly. Kafirun. Kafirun. It's the same template. So this is template number one. I'm going to give you about six, seven, eight templates today. This one is important. Some you don't have to learn, okay? But this one you have to learn, right? Let me say, Fasaka means, oh, let's do another one. Dhakara means he remembered. So how do I say it? Rememberer, the one who remembers. Dhakirun. Right, Zakirun, and you hear Zakir. It's the same thing. Same thing, Zakir. Right. It's just that we're ending it properly. It's Zakirun. So Zakirun is the one who remembers, rememberer from Zakara, Zakirun, Fasaqa, Fasiqun, Samia, Samiun. Okay, Jahala or Jahila. I think Jahala. Jahala means he didn't know. How do you say it? the one who doesn't know? Jahil, Jahilun, right? So it's the same pattern. Kafirun, Sadiqun, Kathaba, Kathiba, I think. Kathiba means he lied. How do I say liar? Good. Kathibun. So this is the pattern that you need to learn. Just remember Qatala Qatilun, and you've got the pattern. So kafara means he disbelieved. And kafirun is the one who does that verb. Kafirun is the one who disbelieves. Yeah. Yeah, kuffar is plural. We're not going to do plurals. Kafirun is also plural. Kafiruna is also plural. So kafara, kafirun, and plural is kafiruna. We've done the plurals in lesson two, I think. So let's just do another one. Fa'ala means he did. Fa'ala is the verb. He did. Good. You've written it. You've written the answer. Excellent. Right. So what do you call doer? Again. Fa. Guess on the second one. Fa'i. And Dhamma, Tain, Dopesh on the last letter. So Fa'ilun means doer. And in Arabic, they use a lot of times, they use the word Fa'ala to show you the template. We use Kataba, um, Yaktubu, Taktubu. We used Kataba because the book that I did it from, based it on, used Kataba. But many times they use Fa'ala. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'alu, fa'alat, fa'alta. They do it. They do it that, right? So that's okay as well. So here, fa'ala and fa'ilun is the doer. Kataba, yes, good. So kataba means he wrote. So how do you say writer? Katibun, right? So now all the root words that you've learned, or most of them, the, the regular ones definitely, you should be able to look at those regular words and make the doer of that verb yourself now by putting it into the fa'ilun pattern. So this is the pattern to remember fa'ilun or remember it as qatilun, remember it as ja'ilun, remember it as kathibun, whatever. But that is the pattern to make the doer, the one who does it, the noun, the one who does the verb you're talking about. Are there any exceptions to the rule? Um, 
I'll have to think about that. I'm just thinking about irregular verbs. Uh, what happens in irregular verbs? Um, I'll have to think about that. But this is, just remember this pattern. Katibun means writer. The one who writes. Because kataba means to write. Okay, so now I'm going to show you. So these were the two extra slides just to sort of, sort of explain to you what's going on. So now, in English, you call the doer, you call it active participle. If that works for you, then it's, it's there written. In Arabic, it's ism fa'il. Ism al-fa'il. Right? Fa'il means doer. Can you see? You can see it in there. Fa'ilun is the doer. So it's the noun of the doer, like. So here we go. I've just written this out now, okay? So fa'ala is the template verb, template. And fa'ilun is the formula to make it into the doer, okay? So you, without looking at your books, you do this one. So we've done this now, okay? But gataba, put it into the fa'ilun pattern. So what will you do? Instead of the fa, it's a ka here. So it's going to be ka the ain gets a kasra on it, so it's going to be the ain corresponding letter here is the ta, so it's going to be kati, and the lam corresponding to the ba this time is getting a dhamma on it, so it's going to be kati bun, kati bun, seven times in the Quran at least, inshallah. Right? A writer, it can also refer to the action, it could also refer to writing. But mostly, writer. I mean, mostly this pattern is for, would translate as writer outside of the Quran. Those seven words inside the Quran, I'm not going to comment on, is it going to be a writer most or is it going to be writing? But generally, the template for that is the doer. Zalama. Okay, so we might know this one in Urdu anyway, right? Might have called it people as well. So, so, Zalama, put that into the Fa'ilun pattern. What do you get? So, the corresponds to the Fa. So, the Li Mun. Zalimun. So, Zalimun is the one who does Zalama. Zalama is he oppressed. Zalimun is oppressor. Yeah. Oppressor. And oppressor. The book also wrote oppressing. So zalimin. Yeah. Zal, zal, once you got zalimun, zalimuna, zalimina. Then you get all those other combinations. Zalimani, zalimaini. Yeah. They're all nouns. Zalimun, oppressor. Zalimuna, oppressors. Alima, so Alima. What is Alima? Alima means Alima means to know, but okay. In a sentence, Alima means he knew. So how do you say knower? Alimun. A li mun. Alimun, and we all know what alimun is. We call it to a scholar or somebody who is learned because he is doing the knowing. You know, he's the doer of the knowing. So he knows. So he's an alim. A man of knowledge translating here. Somebody's asking, is that another way to? translate words to convert words to ing that is i will do it next i'll do it a bit later inshallah okay so alimun zalimun katibun you know how they have formed from their root words so you can maybe have a go at trans making some yourself as well from the vocabulary that you've learned so last one kafara he disbelieved we've already done it but now we're doing it sort of again properly so kafara so kafara goes through this fa'ilun pattern. It becomes kafi. 
Run. And Kafirun is the one who does Kafara. It's the doer of Kafara. So the doer of Kafara is a disbeliever. Are we happy with that? So now you can look back at your root words and see if you can, you know, make some the doer of that verb using this pattern yourself. <coughs> yes, Samia, Samiun. So Samia, he heard. The one who hears is Samiun. Is this what we're doing for the entire lesson? We're just going to learn some, going to do a bit, a bit harder patterns. But yeah, you've got this one. This one is important. Remember this pattern, right? It's maybe an easier lesson today, right? Right. We're happy to move on to the next pattern. I'm just trying to find some aid. Have some aid here. I just can't find it. Alhamdulillah, found it. Alhamdulillah. Right, okay, we're happy to move to the next one. So this is the pattern to make the verb into a doer. The fa'ilun pattern. Katibun, zalimun, fasiqun, kathibun, sadiqun, salihun. Good. Easy lesson so far? Okay. Next one now is, I want to show you the template for saying that basically when the verb is done to something, what noun do you give that? What noun is that? So let me show you, inshallah, right? So dhalama, we've got dhalama. Dhalama means he oppressed. Now, I want to give, want you to be able to make the word for the one that has had the dhalama done on them, right? Or the thing that has had the dhalama done, right? So it's the dhalama happening to the thing. What word do you give it? And what is the pattern? So let's have a look. So the verb dhalama here, the verb done to something. So, yeah. Okay. So this is the pattern that you use in order to describe when the verb is done to something, right? So, oppressed. So what's happening with oppressed? The verb is being done to it. The dhalama, the oppression is being done to the, the subjects. So those subjects are madhlumun, oppressed. So this is the pattern. I'll give you some more examples, inshallah. Right. So this means oppressed. What's happening? It's this thing is having the dhalama done on it. Right. So this is the pattern for having the verb done on it. So it's a pattern where a meme appears with a fatha. Right. A meme appears with a fatha. Then the first root letter has a scoon on it, has a jism on it. So, madh, the second root letter gets a dhamma on it. And a wow appears. So, it becomes madh, lu. And then the third root letter, which I've left as black, gets a double dhamma on it. The double dhamma signifies that it's become an ism. It's become a noun now, right? It's become a noun Islam, uh, in Arabic. So madhlumun is the ones that have had the dhalama done on them. So it carries the madhlumun pattern. Yes, you, yeah, 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 you're figuring it out, yes. If you know Urdu then, and even if you don't know Urdu, you know some Arabic, you start thinking, oh, think of some words that you know that sound like madhlumun, yeah? Right, and... I'll give you some examples, inshallah. So, again, with the template, this is the template, okay? Fa'ala means he did. 
that's the verb we want to put it into the pattern the pattern we call it maf'ul pattern maf'ul maf'ulun right maf'ulun means done to it's the fa'ala he did it it's just been done to it's been done it's happened on it's happened yeah so maf'ulun same as mazlumun the meme has a fatha the second letter has a um, um, sukun the third root okay no do it again a meme appears with a fatha ma the first root letter has a sukun on it maf the second root letter gets a dhamma on it maf'u and a wow appears after that maf'u and then the lam the last root letter gets a dhamma tain, gets a double dhamma on it so it becomes maf'ulun means done to majnoon yes yeah marfu mansub majroor they all come in here marfu means raised it's had a rafa'a done on it it's become raised yeah and nasaba one of the means of nasaba is like erected and like um established so mansub means established if you take that meaning of establish and then majroor jar it means um drag down one of its meanings is drag down um so majroor would mean dragged down right it's been dragged down right and you'll get others so marfu mansu majroor at this pattern it's had the rafa adun it's raised one's established and the other one's dragged down if you go with those original translations because because nasaba has a few meanings so does you know jar this is still easy good good right now i want to give you some examples and i'll show you some words that you maybe already know so the fa'ala here it goes through the maf'ulun pattern and it comes out with the meaning of the verb done to it so kataba put kataba in this maf'ulun pattern so amma appears in the first root letter mak and then the target so good 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 carry on maktu and the last word good fantastic you've all done it yeah well when i say all i mean you know yeah so maktubun so what do you think without looking at your book what does maktubun mean maktubun so the kataba means to write maktubun is the writing has been done on it sort of yeah that's one way i explain it so the writing has been okay so you said that let's see what the answer is you're correct so written so kataba means to write maktubun is when the written has been done so it's written it means written so now you can look at your root words especially the ones that are regular i've got to think about that irregular one i'm trying to think of an example i can't think of an example yet but the regular ones maktubun and it becomes the description you give when that verb is done so it's the verb has been done kataba has been done so it's maktubun means written Valama. Now, this one, you guys, inshallah, will maybe recognize this word. Valama means he oppressed. Stick valama in the maf'ulun pattern. The done to, the verb has been done pattern. Maf'ulun. What do you get? Yes. Yes. You get mazlumun. And what is mazlum? Those who know Urdu should know straight away. What is mazlum? exactly what do you think mazloom is for those people who have never heard of the word mazloom it means so volama means he oppressed so mazloom is that the oppression is being done on onto it or onto the so what is it the volama is being done so it is oppressed because they're having the volama done on them they're having the injustice done on them. So, mazlumun means 
the ones that are oppressed. Yeah, victim, victim, because what is a victim? It's but oppressed is more accurate because Valama means to oppress. So Madhulum is oppressed, but yes, you'd also say victim because he has been oppressed. Can we take a five minute break now? Okay, we take inshallah a five minute break. Yeah. And we come back in eight four at eight forty, okay? Take a five minute break because people need to have a break and read salah, maybe. Yeah. No break today. I'm a tight person. Right, we just pause it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. It's a very quick five minutes gone past. Right, so let's continue with this. Alima. So Alima means to know he knew. So now we want to put it into the maf'ulun pattern and it's going to have the translation of the, the knowing is done. The knowing is done on it, for example. So what is that going to become? Alima becomes good. Ma, ma, and then lu mun, ma lu mun. And what does ma lu mun mean for those who already use it in Urdu? It means known, doesn't it? Ma lu, that's known. It's known. What's really happening? The to know the knowledge is done is done so you it's known right so Ali the knowledge is done on it so it translates as known Noah it won't be Noah because Noah is the one who is doing it so the Noah is the doer so the doer is the Fa'ilun pattern Fa'ilun is the one who knows so Alimun is the one who knows and ma'lumun is that the known has been done to it. So ma'lum is that no, it means known, right? Because the verb alima has been done. So ma'lumun means known. Now you can think of ma'sum, right? You can think of your own words that you know with this pattern. Shahida. Shahida means he witnessed. So Put it into the pattern. Ma, sh, mash, good. Mashhudun. So, what do you think mashhudun means without looking at your books? Mashhudun is the shahida, the witness has been done on it, right? So, witnessed, witnessed. So now you should be able to get your, at least your regular root words. And with ease, you should be able to put it into this pattern and it gives you the done version of that verb, what it's been done to. Shaheed is something else, another pattern. But this is mashhood, witnessed. And it comes in the Quran as well. Right, let me just give you a few more. Um, what's what's a jahil? What's a jahil? What's jahala mean? Jahala means, yeah, ignorance, isn't it? Yeah, ignorance, didn't know. So put jahala into there. You get majhulun. What's majhulun? Majhulun means unknown. Majhul means unknown. Khalaqa means he created. Now the creating, creating is being done. Makhluqun. Makhluqun means creation. Because creation, the khalaqa has been done too. So makhluqun, same pattern, maf'ulun pattern. Creation. Madlumun, we've done it. Rafa'a means he raised. Marfu'un means the raising has been done. So Raised. Marfu'un means raised. Nasara means to help. Mansurun means helped. Aided. Yes. Mansurun. We'll see maybe so we'll see an example. 
Maybe we'll see some examples, inshallah, later. Jabara means, Jabara, if I know, it means compel. So put compel, okay, force, right? So put that into the maf'ulun pattern. Jabara becomes majburun. Majburun means you're being forced. You, you, you're majbur, you have no choice. You're forced, right? So Jabara becomes majburun. Same as that is Urdu. This is Urdu. If you, you know these words, if you know Urdu, you know what I'm talking about. These words, right? Yes. Um. Okay. This one, Karaha. What does Karaha mean? Karaha. It means he disliked. So put he disliked into the Mafulun pattern. Yeah. What do you get? Karaha becomes Makruhun. Makru. Which means he didn't like it becomes now the thing is being done to it, it becomes disliked. So makruhun means disliked, makru. Right? And I think this one bar bar means um, righteousness, one of the meanings, right? And mabrur, I think mabrur, yeah, it means righteous. So it translates as accepted. Mabrur, Hajj Mabrur. Right? So you can think now yourself of other patterns, other words. You might already know the words um, in the maf'ul form. So that is template number two. The first template was fa'ilun, doer. The second template is maf'ulun, the verb has been done to. Can I write those words out? Um, over here might be difficult, maybe in the, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Telegram channel. Um, I might be able to do it. I might do it. Inshallah. So is this the same as maf'ulun? Um, words used for the past and future words, depending on the sentence. Yeah, so when I said maf'ul bihi, and the fa'il, the doer, and maf'ul is the thing that the verb is done to, it was the same word, fa'ilun and maf'ulun, but now you're seeing it, you know, come into life. All right, can we move on to the third template? Okay, these two are the easy templates, okay? Learn these two. These two are the easy templates. The next ones are a bit trickier, a bit harder, right? You don't need to know the next ones as sort of rigorously as you need to know these. The fa'ilun and the maf'ulun pattern, they come, right? Let's see if I've got the, okay, then particular words, then particular words I could search for coming once, once, 13 times, three. But the pattern is coming. That pattern, maf'ulun pattern, is coming again and again. So next one. Masdar, masdar. So masdar is the verbal noun. What is a verbal noun? It's when you say he walked, but now you're saying walking, talking, remembrance, right? Speaking, laughing. See, laugh, it's not he laughed. It's not he is laughing, but it's laughing by itself, speaking, yeah? Walking, not he walked, not walker, but walking. Not he remembered, but remembrance. Okay? So it's the verbal noun. To tell you the truth, when I did learn this, I never heard of what a verbal noun was. I didn't even know in English what a verbal noun was. Right? But it's that normally when you get a word and you stick ans or ing at the end of it, that's the verbal noun. Okay, fantastic. A noun associated with an action. Right? A noun associated with an action. Let's see some examples. So you might be sort of, you know, you might find it hard to know there's not only one master pattern. There's not only one pattern. Each verb, there is a set, there's a set of patterns and each verb fits into one of those patterns. You wouldn't know the pattern of the verb unless you learnt it with the verb itself. Right? Let's just see some examples. Kharaja. Kharaja 
has a verbal noun pattern of fu'ulun. Fu'ulun. So that is a verbal noun pattern, fu'ulun. It's not the only one, but it is one pattern. Right? So put kharaja into the fu'ulun pattern. What do you get here? So khu, ru, and a wow, khuru, and the last letter. Because look, this one fa'ala is becoming fu'ulun. So kharaja is going to become khurujun. Khurujun. Right? Five times. And that is a meaning of leaving. So kharaja means he left. Khurujun means leaving. It's the action happening. It's the verb happening. Yes. So kharijis, yeah? They did khuruj. So somebody's asking, yeah? So they left. They left. Right? So that's one verbal noun pattern. That's one mustard pattern. Dhakara has, follows another pattern. And the pattern Dhakara follows is Fi'lun pattern, fi'lun. Yeah, you're confused now, yeah? So, the pattern for the doer is one. Fa'ilun, job done. The pattern for the verb is done to is maf'ulun, job done. When it comes to the master pattern, you have a few different patterns. How do you know which verb fits in what pattern? You don't. You have to really learn the verb past, present, and master together. So, dhakara yadhkuru dhikrun. That's how you'd learn the verb, right? In more of an sort of enhanced way. You would learn the past and the present and the masdar. So, kharaja yakhruju khurujun. You have to learn it with the verb because you don't know what it is otherwise. Right? But remember, fa'ilun and maf'ulun are the main ones. This one, just sort of look at it and sort of think, okay, ah, yeah, yeah, I know what's going on. Just give you some idea, right? Not expected to learn these master patterns, but inshallah, you might be able to, you know, you might start to get acquainted with them. How do you remember all the all the word patterns? You have to learn the pattern um, with the actual verb itself. And there's not like 50 million patterns. There's a few. If you learn these few here in these slides, that's it. Yeah, there might be others, but this is covering a big part, I think. I tend to learn patterns by actual words. So I'll learn kharaja is khurujun. So I don't learn furulun, I just learn khurujun. Dhakara, I just learn dhikrun. Right, so that's another one. You might see fi'lun, you might see um, bi'run, you might see, so then you'll know, oh, that's like dhikrun. Ah, it's the same pattern as the dhikrun. Oh, this one is the same pattern as khurujun. I don't learn fu'ulun, fi'lun, fa'lun. I just learn, you know, I just think dhikrun, yes, dhikrun is a master. I know that pattern. So I do it on the actual words themselves. I don't actually learn these patterns. Why is it not remembering and why is it remembrance? It may even translate as remembering. It may even translate as remembering in some places, but the book had it translated as remembrance, so I'm just going to keep with that. How do you work out the pattern? You can't work out the pattern. You just have to know that this verb is going to follow one of these patterns. So you have to generally just be acquainted with the patterns. Again, from here onwards, if it doesn't get in your head, don't worry about it. You just watch the slides get some sort of understanding. The main ones were fa'ilun and maf'ulun, the two we've just done. And they were the easier ones as well. Sabara follows fa'lun pattern. Fa'lun. Right? Fa'lun. And an easy way to see these two is, look, the root letters are the same. Dhakara, dhakara. Well, this has got a double ending, so you know it's a noun. So it's most likely a verbal noun. It's the three same root letters, 
But you've got an ending, which is a double dhamma. So it's become a noun. It's become a verbal noun. It's maybe one way to figure it out. So sabara goes into the fa'lun pattern. It becomes sabrun, which means patience. Sabrun jamilun, right? Patience, sabrun. So fu'ulun pattern, fi'lun pattern, fa'lun pattern. And the last one here, and maybe the book has mentioned the most frequently occurring patterns, these four. Just, just remember these four, or I get acquainted to them. Look. Fi'lun, fa'lun, fa'alun. So basura becomes basarun. Right? So look at look at this. The root letters are still there, the same. There's no addition. There's no additional letters. But one thing has happened is the ending has become double. So you know, right, verbal noun. It's maybe a verbal noun. So basura means, so basura means, to see, he saw. Basarun is seeing. Basarun is seeing. Right, so that's the verbal noun pattern. Yeah, gone a bit harder. Of course it has. Yeah. How would you use these in a sentence? Inshallah, we'll see. Right. So that's the mustard pattern. Happy to move on? Just be acquainted, get acquainted with basarun. Like, you know, you, everybody knows dhikrun, yeah? Dhikr, dhikrun. Sabrun as well. Many people may already be using sabrun in their life, yeah? Basarun is the other one. Khurujun. You've got four main, maybe these are the, the most main mustard templates. So you got sami'a. Is it going to be sumu'un, sim'un, sam'un, sama'un, yeah? I think it's sam'un. Right. So, you know, you can even have a go. You might have heard the word somewhere before. Right. Next one. Moving on. Sami'a means to hear. Sam'un. In the sam'a wal basara wal fu'ada, right? So sam'a, I think that's a mustard there. Yes, they're going to become marfu, they're going to be mansub, they may become majroor as well. That's all, the grammar could all still happen. So it could be dhikrun, dhikran, dhikrin, yeah? It, become, it could become dhikra as well, right? So the endings can change, but it's, it's double. It's a double ending there. And uh, what do you call it? Can be single as well, so it's like a noun. So all the noun, the noun rules apply now, right? Or some of them apply, right? I don't expect you to learn this one. I just want to show you. You don't have to learn this one, right? I'm just gonna. Well, I just want to show you some connections of words that you've, you know, you've seen before, and you, you know, some connection happening. Okay, mm -hmm. so ism al makan, right? The noun of the place, and ism al zaman, uh, the noun of time. Right, so these have an indication of the nouns of place and the nouns of time. So, sajada, what's sajada mean? What sajada mean? Bow. How would I say bower? The one who bows. First pattern. Yeah? So, fa'ilun becomes sajidun. Sajidun means the one who does sajada. Yeah? Sajid. You've got a friend called Sajid. That's what it means. The one who does sajada. Anyway, we're on this one now. This is a maf'ilun pattern. Don't learn this. Just want to show you it, right? Have a rest. Just want to show you that, look, some words get manipulated and they become what they become. So look, put sajada into the maf'ilun pattern. You get masjidun. Don't you? Masjidun. And what is Masjidun? It's the place of sajada. Yeah, it's the masjid. But what is it going literally? It's the place of sajda, which is the masjid. So, yeah, this one is here. Oh, that's cool. 
one just here, you know, just, just want to show you, don't, don't learn it. I don't even know ma fi'ilun. But if I want to do it, I'll do it with sajada masjidun. And I'll say, okay, that's a place, you know, that's a place of sajada. So anything that follows into a masjidun pattern, it's maybe the place of that verb. Yeah. Sakana. Sakana means to. What do you do in Urdu when you do sukun? What is sukun? It's actually Arabic as well. What you do in a sukun? You're resting, isn't it? Sukun, what do you do in Arabic when there's a sukun there? You're resting, you're stopping, you're like, yeah, you're resting. So sakana, okay, break, yeah? Call it rest. Maf'alun, that's another, that's another noun of a place, pattern. Maskanun, what is maskanun? It is a place where you rest. So it's called house. Well, that's miskinun. Beggar is miskin. That's different. Yeah. That's miskin. Interesting where that comes from, but I'll have to check. So can you see now? Sakana maskanun, sajada masjidun is the place of, of, the, of the verb. Darasa. What does darasa mean? To study. To study. Put that into maf'alatun pattern. So there's a few patterns for a noun of place as well. Yeah, Beitun is a house as well, but we're looking at this pattern now. Yeah. Maskan Maskanun is also house. Where sukun is done. Right? Okay, so maf'alatun becomes madrasatun. Madrasatun is the place of darasa. It's the place of darasa. So you call it a school, you call it a madrasa. So madrasa is, it's the place where the darasa is done. It's the place where the studying is done. So again, this is just, this is just like for more for appreciation, just to show that, look, this is, this is what you can do in Arabic. Yeah. You get the verb and you can make the place of the verb from the verb, providing you know the pattern for it. So if you see, you know, if you see something in the Quran that's got this sort of pattern, like, Masjidun, it might be, or if you see it in Arabic somewhere, then it might be the place of where that verb is done. Yeah, so again, this is just just to show you to get maybe a wow, that's cool. Oh, wow, did, I didn't know Masjidun is from Sajada, and that's how it works. Yes, it's pretty much spinning off words from root letters. Yeah, spinning off words, because the majority of all words in Arabic, they come from root words. So once you learn the patterns, once you learn, okay, this root word, when you do this to it, fa'ilun, fu'ulun, maf'ilun, you know, these things have this effect on the verb, and now you can make a new verb out of it. Right? Maktaba. Yeah? There you go. Maktabatun. Yeah, I think so. Maktabatun. Kataba to write. So maktabatun is where the writing is happening. Office. You'll call it an office then, won't you? Yeah, there you go. Zed, did you think about that one yourself? Are you non-Arab as well? Because that was a good one. You're Arab. Oh, you thought of it yourself. Good. Are you Arab? Oh, fantastic. Non-Arab. See, non-Arabs doing some good jobs there. Right, good, good. So you might find new words and think, oh, that word's got mafoon and pattern. I know that already. Yeah. And the last one, I think this is the last one. Ism al-Ala is the noun of the instrument. So you've got a verb. Now there's a pattern to show you how you can convert it to, you know, the instrument that does that noun. Yeah, yeah at the end of this course, you'll all be Arabs, right? Now don't try going Saudi with that with that notion, yeah? You need a, you need a visa to go there, right? So... Let's do this one. So we want to we want the pattern that converts the verb into the instrument of that verb, right? So fataha. Fataha means fataha means open. How do you say opener? Yeah. How do you say opener? So opener, the one who does the verb is, is the first pattern. 
fa'ilun pattern. So fataha into fa'ilun becomes fatihun. Fatihun means opener. That's why you have the people of the past when they opened a land, fatih, yeah, opener, because he opened the land. Yeah? Fatiha, right? You know, Fatiha, Surah Fatiha, opening of the Quran, right? So how, so Maftuhun means opened. The second, you know, the second one, the second pattern, Maf'ulun, Maftuhun means opened. Yeah, the door is open. You'll say Al-Bab Maftuhun, for example. Maftuh means opened. Anyway, we're on to this one. Fataha. If you put it into the Mif'alun pattern, don't have to remember the pattern. Just, just enjoy the lesson. Just enjoy what's going to happen to the word, yeah? Right? Miftahun. So Miftahun is the pattern that gives you the noun. Will it give you the noun of, will it give you the instrument of all verbs? Maybe not. You can put them in, but they not might not all be real used words. But Fataha Miftahun is. Miftahun is the tool that is used um, to do the fataha. So we're going to call it, yeah? We're going to call it key. So miftahun is a key. And you can see fataha inside there. You can see fataha is there, but you've got some template going on. So miftahun is the tool that does fataha. So miftahun means key. So this is just showing you, if you know a bit of Arabic and you speak a bit here and there and you've spoken a bit, then you'll know Miftah means key. And this is where it comes from. It comes from Fataha, which means to open. Miftahun is a key. I knew it. Fantastic. Araja. Araja means to go up. Stick it in a pattern. Stick it in the same pattern, actually. Mif'alun. It becomes... Mi'raj, Mi'rajun. And what does Mi'rajun translate as? The tool used to go up. Yeah, and Mi'raj means we know. Yeah, Isra means when Rasulullah went from Mecca to um, Betul Maqdis. And then the Mi'raj is when Rasulullah went up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So Mi'rajun is that journey Rasulullah took up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Arabic, mi'rajun, it means the tool of going up. So a ladder or a step. Allah, Allah alam, if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, someone's asking, can it mean he climbed? Uh, for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm not going to say anything, but mi'rajun, it won't mean he climbed because mi'rajun is a noun. So it, not, it doesn't mean it, he climbed. Yeah, this one Araja might mean uh, Araja he went up, but Mirajun is the tool. It's a noun now, right? The tool of going up. So could somebody call a lift a Miraj? Maybe, because that also is a tool that takes you up. It's a thing that takes you up. Yeah, if you think if you must if you mastered everything else, then learn these patterns. Yeah, no no problem, right? But you know. Patterns one and two are the really important ones. And the masdar is important as well. And then after that, you know, just pick up what you can. But yeah, if, if you want more work to do, then learn them all. I mean, I don't have, I haven't even learned, learned these. I mean, I remember miftahun. So I know the pattern from miftahun. And the previous one, I know the patterns from dhikrun. So I know the patterns from the actual words themselves. But if somebody says to me, what are the masdar patterns? I'll have to think about it and think dhikrun. So one is fi'lun. One's fat loan. I love to do it like that. Okay. Right. And we've got 20 minutes left for our last session on verses. A bit sad. Right. But, you know. Okay. Rabbana. You tell me now. Rabbana. Rabbana. What does Rabbana mean? Our Lord. Okay. Innaka. Inna ka. So two words there. Inna and ka. Indeed you. Look at this one. Jami'u. What's there? What's this? Jami'u. Jama'a means together. Jami'u. What does jami'u literally mean? The one who does. 
the gathering. So gatherer. Yes. Like like Zakara Zakirun. This is Jama'a Jami'un. Now the reason why the Dhamma is singular is because of some grammar. Because once you got the Jami'un, it could be Jami'an, Jami'in, Jami'u, Jami'a, Jami'i. Right? All the Murfu, Mansu, Majroor noun rules can apply. So in this case, it's not Jami'un because some grammar is going on. That's why. It's Jami'u. So Jami'u means gatherer. Right? Nasi and Nasi. Jami'un Nasi, gatherer of the people. Right? Liyomin. On a day, la raiba, la not, raiba, doubt. We didn't do raiba in the vocabulary, but raiba means doubt. Right, so la raiba, no doubt, fihi, what is fihi? In it, right? So people are able to translate parts of the Quran, is that true? Yes. Again, it's a matter, it's a matter of how much time you put in. It does It does involve a lot, this, this course, you know, over 13 weeks, you have to give that whole time up, any free time you have, learn, 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 learn. I'm hoping you're seeing the benefits. Now, it's possible, but I know people's lives are busy and people find it difficult to even attend a live class. I know how it is, it can be really difficult. Right, but it's there, the notes are there. Go back and learn it and listen to the recordings, and get better. Yeah. Valika. Valika. Yeah, lesson one, Valika. Not not this is. Oh sorry. Yeah. That is. That is Yomun. Yomun literally mean a day. Majmu'un. Look, maf'ulun pattern. Maf'ulun. Jama'a means to gather. So majmu'un means. So jama'a means to gather. So majmu'un means the jama'a is done to it. So gathered. So that is a day. Majmu'un gathered. Lahu. So what's lahu being done here? Let's see. That is a day to which all mankind shall be gathered. Right? So lahun nasu. So that is a day uh, gathered. So that is a day to which all mankind shall be gathered. So you can see it in the brackets there. Wadalika and that Yomun a day Shahida. Shahida to witness. So mashhudun is witnessed. Mafulun pattern. So we've got a mafulun pattern here and a mafulun pattern here. Both places and it's the Quran. So the Quran does have mafulun patterns in there, yeah. Um, so, man, so nas, um, mankind may be translated as people as well. Yeah, so nas. Wa if qala rabbuka. So wa if and behold. Now some translations might have and when in there, right? I'm just skipping to the translation in the book. Wa if and behold, qala. Not just said. He said. Yeah, he said past tense. So, you know, you see a verb, you got to be able to differentiate. Is it past tense? Is it present tense? You know, what's going on? You need to learn the patterns. So you need to be more acquainted with the patterns. So what is qala? And behold, he said, Rabbuka. So who, who, who said? How do you know your Lord said? Okay, so the cat is your, but how do you know your Lord? 
did the saying exactly. Rabbu is marfu. Look, it's not Rabbaka, it's not Rabbika, it's Rabbuka. So this attached pronoun, they don't change because you change that to a key, it makes a difference in the translation. So they are super strong, they don't change. The marfu'ness is in the actual noun. So the Rabbu, right? So Rabbuka means, and behold, he said, who said? Your Lord said, Lil Malaikati, to the angels, Inni, I, Ja'ilun, look, Sadiqun, Fa'ilun pattern. Ja'ala means to make. So Ja'ilun means. You know, outside of the Quran, Ja'ilun means maker, yeah, the one who does the making, right? So Allah SWT used this word, that fa'ilun pattern, yeah? So a point here, it's coming as a point, right? Fil ardi, in the earth, right? So again, it says in here, but sometimes, you know, these prepositions they can have different meanings so if you set your mind in the earth you know it's not inside the earth on the earth you're still going to know generally what it's meaning yeah so on the earth khalifa khalifa one of the explanations of khalifa is a creation that follows each other in generations another one is another meaning of khalifa is yeah vicerant meaning one a representative of Allah, right? Two meanings that I know. So next one, Qulillahu, Qulillahu. So this one is Qul, say, good, say. So what are you saying? Allah, right? So it's not, this is not like a doer now, because this is not, a, this is a command. Say, so what do you say? Allahu, Allah. Khaliku. Khaliku. Right? This time the, there's no alif popping out there. It's actually a little small alif there. All the Urdu we call it Krizabur. Does the same thing. Khaliku. What's Khaliku mean? The one who does Khalaqa, the doer of Khalaqa. So creator. So say Allah is the creator. Kulli shay. Kulli means everything and shay is thing or everything right kulli shay go together kulli shay means everything Let's see if we've got another one show the font there i just want to see if we've got any more okay we haven't this is the last one right la ilaha la ilaha la no Ilaha God deity Illa except I don't think we've done Illa in the vocabulary but try to learn it because it comes in La ilaha illallah right so La ilaha illa huwa right there's no God Illa except him huwa Alimu here we go Fa'ilun. Over here, the Ain doesn't have its own alif. It has a small one here. Or the Karizabur, right? Does the same thing. Alimu. Noah. The one who does Alima, right? So, Alimul Ghaibi. The Noah of Ghaib. Ghaib is unseen, right? So, that's where we get Ghiba from. Ghiba. Because the one that you're speaking about is Ghaib, meaning he's Ghaib, he's, he's not here, he's unseen, he's not here. So Ghiba comes from there, backbiting, yeah, Ghaib, yeah. So connected to Ghaib. So Alimu Ghaibi, um, Noah of the Ghaib, was Shahada, and the observable here. Shahida means witness, yeah, uh, but on the translation here, Shahada, observable. Okay, next one. Wadakhala. Wadakhala. Root word. Wadakhala. And he entered. 
and he entereth jannatahu so look his garden right look jannata is mansub jannata don't look at the ha the ha is a attached pronoun that doesn't change but the actual mansubness you can see jannata it's not jannatuhu it's not jannatihi it's jannatahu so who entered we don't know because there's no marfut word mentioned here but mansub this is mansub so he entered the Jannah. He entered the garden. All right. So, and he entered the garden. Wahua. Wahua. And he. Zalimun. Dua here. Zalimun. What is Zalimun? Unjust. Yeah. Unjust. It's translated as unjust here. Yeah. The one who does Zalimah. Right? Yeah, outside of the Quran, outside of this verse, you would say oppressor. Yeah? Some translations might even use the word oppressor. Linafsi. So he is unjust to his own self, his own nafs, himself. Wama zalam nahum. So wama here means and not. Zalam nahum. Zalamna is the word. Past tense. Zalama. Yeah. Zalamna. We oppressed them. And not we oppressed them. So. And we did not oppress them. Walakin. Lekin. Right. But. Kanu. We've done Kanu. Kana. Kana, Kanu, remember? Kanu means they all were. They all were. Hum, they. Zalimin. And when a separate one comes like this, it has the meaning of, generally, I don't know exactly in this particular verse, but it does have the meaning generally of only they. Only they. Yeah? Zalimin. So volume that is volume again, but it's plural now. Volumina. So, and we did not do zulm on them. Walakin, but they, they were the wrongdoers. Al Hajju. Al Hajju. The Hajj. Ashur. Ashur, yeah? You know, Shahru Ramadan, it's coming up. Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Ashuru is plural. Months. Months. Ma'lumat. Look at this. Ma'lum is the maf'ul pattern. And it's feminine. So feminine plural is atun, remember? Atun and atin. So ma'lu, ma'lum, known. And then plural. It's feminine plural. So the Hajj, yeah, is performed in, in brackets, months that are known. Ma'loom means the alima is done, so known. Right, so ma'loom means known. And it's plural because feminine plural. And last one, inna, indeed, Quran al-Fajri, the Quran of, right, the recitation of the Quran at Fajr, kana, literally outside of this verse, kana, it was, mashhuda, look, shahida means to witness, Maf'ulun is when the witness is done, so it's called witnessed. Witnessed. Yeah. So that is the last of the uh, verses. And do you get homework? Of course you do. Do you get 12 more words to learn? 
a vocabulary? Of course you do. Do you get a test? Of course you do. <laughs> Not letting you off. Right? So that's going to help you cement what you've learned. Now, inshallah, I think the the the, um, the test might be small, I think. The homework is a bit small. Inshallah, in next week's class, we'll go over that first, and then we will start um, uh, the talk on Khushu. Inshallah. So let's just see what the words are for this week and the last week. So here we go. Still, you got numbers in three digits here. Amrun, umurun means matter, a thing. Right, 150 more, inshallah. Tabi'ah, to follow. Tabi'ah, to follow. So tabi'un is follower. Matbu'un, yeah. Not all of the words, when you can put them in all the patterns, they may not all be words that are actually used in, in Arabic, but you can put them all in the pattern, yeah. Yeah, tabi'in. We get tabi'in from, yeah? Ittaba. Tabi'in, right? Right, next one. Ba'dun. Ba'dun sum. Yeah, tabi'in, yeah. So tabi'in means follower, right? Tabi'un means follower. So tabi'in is just plural, followers. So tabi'un or tabi'in means followers, right? So as you start getting learning more patterns and things, things that are sticking in your head coming to your mind, and it's really good, right? But so Ba'dun is some da'a yad'u, call upon someone, supplicate to invite. Da'a yad'u. That's where we get du'a from, right? But also da'a is used in the Quran as well for calling as well. Arada yuridu. It's an Urdu word as well. When you do irada for something, yeah, you decide you want to do something. Right? So arada yuridu. Somebody's asking, what does this Roman numeral for four, what does it mean? Anybody know what it means? It means something. I'm not going to tell you. It's basically verb forms. If anyone's done verb forms, it's one of them. If you haven't, don't worry about it. Inshallah, when I do the... Actually, verb form four. When I do the... Inshallah, when I do the um, slightly advanced course from this, I'll go through it in there, Inshallah. Right? But don't worry about that four for now. Sa'ala... To ask. Yes, Alu. So Sa'ala he asked. Yes, Alu he asks. Dalla yadillu. Okay, so it's in the last lesson we learned Dalla yadillu on the vocabulary to go astray. Ta'a yati'u. Ati'u Allah wa ati'u Rasul. Yeah, obey. Ta'a yati'u. Abada ya'budu. Abada means to worship. Abdullah, worshiper of Allah. Ya'budu, iyaka na'budu. It's only you, na'budu, that we worship. Aduwun, a'da'un. Aduwun is enemy. Enemy. And our favorite word, look where it comes on the last, on the last um, vocabulary one. Qatala yaqtulu. It's driven in your head by now. You should know what qatala means. It's driven in your head, yeah? Done it so many times. So qatala yaqtulu, to kill. Kataba and Yaktubu. So Kataba we've done so much as well, yeah? Kataba, Kataba, Katabu, Katabat, Katabata, Katabna, remember? So Kataba, Yaktubu means to write, prescribe even. And sadly, that's the end. See what other slides we've got left. That's the um, homework. So determine the, the doer of Kafara. Write down the ism maf'ul pattern for these two verbs. Yeah, so it's going to go, so this is a weak verb here. It's going to go in the same pattern, right? It'll go in the same pattern. Dhakara, write the master of dhakara. 
write the ism makan of darasa. This is all in your notes. Write the ism ala of araja. And learn all the vocabulary, words in the vocabulary. You're still going to have a test, inshallah. I'll send the test like normal. It won't be an overall test. It will just be less than 11 test. And learn the tables. Otherwise, you ain't going to understand nothing. I know it's two negatives, but you ain't going to understand nothing. So learn those tables. Those tables are critical. And I think in the last few pages, I've listed the tables out um, in two pages. I also sent the PDF in the Telegram. And, okay, this is the attached pronoun table. So table number one, table number two, table number three, four, and then you got the masculines, you got the feminines, right? And I just want to say that, Zakallah khair to everybody, I want to hand out these slides. I'll put them in the group, take the slides, Put them on your computer, teach yourself, teach your family, teach your kids, teach your husband, teach your wife, teach your family, parents, teach your brothers and sisters. Go through it, go through the slides as though you're teaching it. And you can ask me for help anytime, inshallah. Just message me and say, I'm stuck on this. I don't understand what you're doing here on this slide, right? Teach it, because when you teach it, you learn it. You learn more when you teach it. You'll be forced to learn the table when you're going to teach it to your kid. Your kid's going to say, Mama, Baba, what does that mean? And you're going to say, I don't know, right? So you've got to learn it. You've got to learn it and then teach it. But don't just stop there and say, okay, I've done it now. I'm going to, that's it now. Job done. No, no, no. Teach it and get better at it. Yeah? The more you teach it, the more you're going to learn. People are going to ask you questions. You're going to think, what does that mean? And you're going to, then you can ask me. I still do that. Now, people ask me questions I never even thought of. Some I might be able to answer, others I can't answer. So I ask my teacher, and my teacher gives me a whole lot of other information as well, right? So I still benefit when people ask me questions, right? So definitely do that. And we're just going to end, inshallah, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to go over by a few minutes, right? Right? Right, so this one here, we just want to translate this, okay? What is, and remember, it's in the Quran, right? And remember here, it's got, and remember, Yarfa'u. Rafa'a means to raise. So Yarfa'u literally means he raises, right? Ibrahimu. Who is doing the raising? Ibrahimu. Ibrahim, why? Because Ibrahim is marfu. Look, Ibrahimu. Al-Qawa'ida. Al-Qawa'ida. What is he raising? The mansub. Al-Qawa'ida means the foundations, right? That's where you get Qa'ida. Bella Qaida, the Qaida of Arabic, yeah? Foundation is teaching you about the Qaida. So when Ibrahim was, ra was, was raising the foundation, the min from al bayti yeah, of the house. Look at this one now. Wa Ismailu. Wa Ismailu. Is Ibrahim raising Ismail as well? Or is Ismail doing the raising with Ibrahim? Ismail is doing the raising with Ibrahim. Why? Because he is marfu as well. Ismail is marfu and Ibrahim is marfu. But look how later Ismail came. It didn't matter because it's marfu. So Ibrahim is marfu. Ismail is marfu. So when Ibrahim and Ismail, they both raised the foundations of the house. Yeah. What did they say? Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim. Right. Our Lord. Taqabbal. Qabool. Right. We say Qabool when we get married. Right. People say Qabool when they get married. Accept. You accept it. So taqabbal minna from us. From us, innaka indeed you, anta you, asami, and over here maybe it's only you here, yeah, okay? Asami, the all hearing, al alim, the all knowing. So, because, so they say when you are finishing, when you're doing or finishing, um, you know, an act, you can raise this dua, 
you can read this dua. They, they, they were raising the house and they're reading this dua, so it's good for us to read a dua as well. Like this, so Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim. Oh Allah, accept from us. Indeed, you are the all hearing, the all knowing. You know, at the end of the day, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this um, effort that we've done. And lastly, I think this is the last slide. I think it is. Right. Just to translate this one. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Okay. Right. So it's good to read this. Subhanaka glorified, glory be to you. Allahumma is, O oh Allah. It's like Ya Allah. So Allahumma, O oh Allah. Wa bihamdika and praise is, you, you are praised and I praise you. Wa bihamdika. Ashhadu. I bear witness. And that. La ilaha. There is no God. None has the right to be worshipped. Illa anta. Except anta you. Astaghfiruka. Yeah, I seek your forgiveness. Look, ghafara is in there. Ghafara is in there. And astaghfiruka is something that we've not done yet. But astaghfiruka means I seek your forgiveness. Wa atubu and I repent. Ilayka to you. So, it's a beautiful dua. Beautiful to read. So, the last slide, I think. Keep a connection with the Quran. Read verses regularly. Try to figure out the meaning. Then look at the translation and see how accurate you were. Learn from your mistakes. The more you do this, the more words you will learn and the more you will improve, inshallah. Um, uh, to make further use of your knowledge, engage in teaching others. I'll provide you the PowerPoint, inshallah. Zakallah khair. And that's the end of the course. Um, we will meet next week for the last time, inshallah, uh, for this. And we will do the salah translation, a talk on khushu and salah translation. And then after that, um, everybody goes back to their own routines. But I hope that the Quran is going to be now part of your routine, inshallah. And then come December, uh, this year, November this year, I'm going to either repeat this or I'm going to do the super simpler version. But I'll do something, inshallah. So, Jazakallah Khair. I will see you next week, inshallah. And by the way, next week's class is for anybody. So, if you've got people who might you think will benefit from learning the Salah translation and learning a bit about Khushu, it's open for anybody. So, anybody, you don't have to be a student. Um, but I'm going to do the translation, and those students will benefit more, I think, inshallah, because. Um, you know, you've done the Arabic. People who are brand new to it, they might not know, but inshallah, they might be able to pick something up. So, yes, you can invite your friends, etc., and family. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.